Yeah, that's always the big question. Um, and quite literally, it's a big question. Uh, because when we talk about existence, and because there's that word existence in that word existentialism, existence is usually translated as life. Um, so it's about our life in general. It's not about those tiny, small activities that we do in our daily lives, our daily life worries, like our worries over the grocery shopping that we need to do, um, or like our stress about some examinations that are coming up. No, um, existentialism is about life in general. So from birth until death, like when you take that full perspective, how do you then look at your life? So it's a much, much larger perspective. And I think that, that is the core of existentialism. It's widening our perspective, widening our views on ourselves. Um, and now I can also go into a little bit more um, theoretical or philosophical explanation. And um, the thing is that there is the philosopher Martin Heidegger, who is often seen um, as one of the founding fathers of existential philosophy. And he's, he started to use the word existence because he said that the word existence comes from uh, the Latin ex and sistere. Um, although his explanation about this has been very much criticized by uh, linguists, but um, I still like Heidegger's explanation. <laughs> so the word existence has this part that means X, which means out, and sistra, which means more or less something like standing. So what he's saying is like in a daily life, we stand at a certain place. Um, and um, so examples of that is that uh, in a daily life, we use many labels. Like you already started by asking, who are you? You started telling all those labels that I may have. Yes, I may have a long list of labels, but whatever labels I use, I will never get to really who I am. Uh, so therefore, I was also saying, like, I'm always more than whatever label you would use. Um, and also, you know, as being a punk myself, or actually now that I've shaved off my hair, more like a skinhead, um, I often hear people say that, yeah, that they have certain immediate associations. They have certain labels, um, connotations with punks or skinheads, where people often think, well, a punk cannot be, a, uh, cannot be like a lecturer or like a philosopher. Um, but hey, well, I am. So um, we often stand at a certain place where people see you in a certain way. They give you certain labels. Or people can also have certain expectations of you. But also, for instance, our parents or our society brings us certain expectations. Like they expect you, yeah, you need to be there or you need to go there in your life. You, this is where you need to stand. This is where others stand. This is where, where you should be. And also sometimes we also develop certain habits where we get really stuck in a certain place where we stand in our lives. And it's difficult to get out of there. And also sometimes also our healthcare providers or even our psychotherapists, they are sometimes putting us in a certain place and they're saying, well, you are um, an extrovert or you are depressed. You are this or that. So they put you at a certain place to stand there. However, Heidegger said, well, being alive, existing, that always means not only standing somewhere, but also being outside of there. That's the X bit in the word existence. And so in the first place, that means that I'm not only standing at this place myself, but I'm always embedded. I'm a part of a much wider context, a much wider setting. For instance, like there are other people around me who label me. There are other people with expectations. There's also healthcare services who put pressure on me. Or there's politics, there's the economy. So wherever I stand, I always stand in a wider context. Another aspect of it is also that I'm able myself to step out of the place where I am. In the first place, that means that I can step outside of the place where I am standing at this moment. And I look at myself like, wow, why am I standing there? Do I want to stand there? It's a very weird place to actually stand. Why don't I stand over there? That's a much nicer place there. I would like to stand over there. So existence means the ability to step 
out of the position, the location where we're now standing, get out of there and reflecting and actually being able to change. And sometimes certain places is very difficult to really walk to because our context where we live sometimes forbids us to go to certain places. There are many walls that society has built. And also, for instance, as being a man, I cannot give birth to children. So my body is also limiting my uh, opportunities. So it is, but it is, I can change within those parameters, within those limitations that are there. But at least I can always step out, reflect on it. And possibly I can also reflect on myself and think, well, looking at all those different places. Some places are unattainable and some other places I actually don't want to go to. Well, actually, where I am now, this position is quite good. And then I can just stand where I'm standing. But in that case, I've done that while I was having this bigger perspective on my life in general and my context in general. Then I can say, well, I'm okay here. I'm standing at the right place. So, and I own my place. And I, it's not only that I've ended up at this place because others have pushed me here or luck or fate or life, but no, it's also because I want to be here. And then I make a deliberate decision and I take the responsibility for standing where I stand as using my opportunities, looking at the freedom that I have and the lack of freedom that I have and making a very conscious decision. And I think that this is what really existentialism is about. It is having that bigger perspective on our lives and always having the opportunity to step outside the place where we are, reflecting on ourselves and changing if we want.